morning, Glendale. Good morning, Pastor Staff. I want to tell you um, a little story, and uh, you know when I tell you a little story that, that I always end in, in a God thing. So bear with me. Am I on? Yeah. I was at Target the other day, and I'm walking down the clothing aisle, and there's a woman who's parallel to me, and she's got no mask on. And I tend to be the mask police, but I looked at her face. I thought, no, this is not somebody that you mess with. So she looked at me, and she said, what are you looking at? And I said, well, you don't have a mask on. She said, well, why don't you mind your own business? I said, because you are my business, and if you're here with no mask on, you are putting every one of us in danger. Why don't you mind your own business? You've got a mask on. And I, well, you know, on and on and on. And I can feel my heart start to beat, and I can feel my voice getting loud. And I said, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. So as I walk away from her with my voice shaking, I said, I want you to consider that you could make someone very sick. And I went into another department, and I was like, oh! I got through this, I got through this. So, as I tell you, everything has a meaning. I controlled myself no matter how much my flesh was screaming to tell her to. When I got home, I found a scripture that is absolutely my favorite scripture. So listen to this when you feel like you're just going to lose it with somebody and you know they're wrong. This is from John 14, 27 in the Amplified Bible. Peace I leave with you. This is Jesus. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Ponder that. Jesus said, my peace. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid as I was. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed and do not permit yourself to be fearful, intimidated, cowardly, and unsettled. And that's all I have to say. And if this woman is watching, mask up. Now, Stephen is going to light the candle. Would you believe that this is the last Sunday that we will be in 2020 and everybody went yay so i would admonish you urge you plead with you get your candles for 2021 we've been lighting this get the does anybody know how long we've been doing this 10 months We've been here 10 months we have lit this candle every sunday and and other events for 10 months so let's just join together as something that we can pull on. It's virtual, but it means a lot. And now, prepare your hearts and minds for worship.
I invite you, no matter where you find yourself this morning, to sing Angels from the Realms of Glory with us on this third day of Christmas. by night. God with us is now residing. Yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, leave your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watching long in hope and fear, suddenly the Descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Please join me this morning in our opening prayer. God takes on flesh as a baby in a manger and joins us in the struggle called life. This is what radical solidarity feels like, risk and possibilities shared, the feeling that we are in this together, the mess, the beauty, and the work. Don't be afraid to feel hopeful. God's promises are kept. God won't opt out or turn away. God won't give up when things get tough. God won't defend abuses of power or privilege or institutions or traditions at the expense of freedom or love or liberation or your own worth. God knows what's at stake. Let all who are weary rejoice. All of evil's deceptions will be revealed and fear of unjust powers will cease. God dwells among us, calling upon hearts from all walks of life to open, to take courage, to soften, to release. Behold, the birth of Jesus Christ reveals the way of love. Love divine, all love's excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Fix 
makes in us thy humble dwelling all thy faithful mercies crown jesus thou art all compassion pure unbounded love thou art visit us with thy salvation enter every trembling heart Thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit, find that thou hast second rest. Take away our bent to sinning, Alpha and Omega be. End of faith as its beginning, set our hearts at liberty. Almighty to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Suddenly return and never, never more thy temples leave. Thee we would be always blessing, serve thee as thy hosts above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. pure and spotless let us be let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder love and praise Good morning, Glendale. I welcome you, and as always, I welcome you in love and in spirit this morning. I invite you to take a breath and know that you are in a safe community of faith that loves all of who you are. So this morning, I welcome you. No matter what you're feeling or just not feeling, no matter what you have or don't have, no matter where you have come from or where you are going, no matter what you believe or what you may be doubting this morning, no matter who you love, how you identify, or the color of your skin, I welcome you here at Glendale United Methodist Church. I welcome you into this community of faith that loves all of who you are. And I remind you that there is a God who knows you by name and loves all of who you are. Let us continue with our service this morning. I'm Peter Von Ace and have the opportunity to be in this worship service today and to bring the word from, from God in sermon format. So I want to begin by saying that it's a joy for me to be here. I appreciate that Pastor Stephanie allowed me to... Uh, fill in for her while she is away. She is uh, a dear friend, and since I have retired and placed my charge conference membership here, she is my pastor. Um, we do gather with some joys to lift up the movement of life through this past week and Christmas Day. 
to be reminded of the gift of the Christ child is a joy. I uh, know that the experience was, was different for our family and likely for yours as well, but to wake up on Christmas Day and to focus and center ourselves in the, the gift of the incarnation, a reminder that God is with us through all things. Over the past many months, I know in my circle of life, I would learn, if not each day, certainly every week, of someone else who had contracted the coronavirus. Well, there is a bit of a joyful shift, at least again in my circle, where over the last week I have heard each day of someone who has received the vaccine. So um, I am looking forward to the number of folks receiving the vaccine is larger than the number of folks I hear contracting the coronavirus. But that is a point of joy that uh, the rollout has begun. I um, have family overseas and I received uh, Christmas greetings and communication from the Netherlands and um, my cousins were saying they are scheduled for January 18th with uh, the vaccine there. So the rollout's beginning throughout the world. Um, in the coming week, we'll move from 2020 to 2021, and I received a, a card in the mail this week, Christmas greetings, but it also said, I think we can all agree that 2020 has not been a very good year, so let's all start over again. So we're looking forward to 2021. Concerns, uh, we continue to to pray for the world as we live through the pandemic. And if what is expected does come to pass, that the holiday season and the movement of people for uh, family gatherings and, and such will bring another surge, that uh, we can pray for one another and for the world in anticipation of a, of a surge. Here in Nashville, Tennessee, we had an explosion on Christmas morning, and so we certainly lift up that as a concern, grateful for um, limited loss of, of life, and that uh, in the midst of it all, there have been some uh, beautiful stories of, of people helping each other. And so we, we hold Nashville and the community in prayer. In my own life experience, the explosion has uh, left me without cell service and internet where I live. So um, another different experience of, of Christmas Day. And we uh, pray for all the systems and infrastructures to get back up and, and running. You may have prayer concerns or joys to share, and I invite you to use the uh, comment box, chat box, and send those to us, or you may also email to uh, Glendale United Methodist Church. We do understand ourselves as a praying community, and as one of the means of grace, we invite you to share with us prayers you would like lifted up. Let us pray. Almighty God, we gather on this gift of a new day to spend time in praise and worship to be still and know that you are God and to echo what the Christmas message brings. 
that you are with us. The Word made flesh that came to dwell, the Word that would come into our hearts, the Word that would shape our life and lead us forward. We live in a world that is struggling with the pandemic. We lift up all who have died, all whose health has been compromised, all who are, are grieving and suffering, all whose financial stability has been rocked. And we give thanks for first responders. We give thanks for the medical community. We give thanks for a vaccine. And we look forward to its full rollout. Lord God, here in Nashville, we once again reminded of the fragility of life and the explosion rocking us on Christmas Day presented quite a contrast of a message of peace and an act of violence. We thank you that in the midst of it all there have been beautiful ways that people have been taking care of each other. Those whose residents were damaged, moved quickly to shelter on a very cold day. And we pray for all who are putting the pieces back together. Lord, we, we come together to listen again for a word you might have to us this day. As we come to the end of a calendar year and anticipate a new year, there is some energy culturally and religiously and within us to reset. Help us find those ways of living individually and with each other that bring health and healing, wholeness and care, that offer love and compassion and inclusion to all. Our faith narrative is that of covenant life shared with you, a covenant given its fullest expression in the birth of Christ Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection. And in that covenant living, we know our own lives to be impacted, that our well-being is tied to the well-being of others. And so as we look around the world as it is and see how so many people are looking for a safe place to be, who are not sure about that next meal, who do not have access to clean water or health care. People who have limited opportunity for education and live in fear each day. Lord, we want to pray for the full coming of your kingdom and our part in hastening that day. So, speak to us this day. Prime us for living well into the coming year. 
Let us embrace the joys and let us hold one another in the concerns. Knowing that we have been given the gift of you with us in Christ Jesus. Always. We offer this prayer as Christ has taught us saying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 22 through 40. Jesus is presented in the temple. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child, Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law. Simon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace. According to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. The return to Nazareth. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, Filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I love the gospel of Luke, and I hope that you had an opportunity to be a part of some virtual worship service on Christmas Eve to 
What transpires, there are three movements in this text. You have Mary and Joseph, the parents, who have, just before what was read, taken Jesus to the on the eighth day for circumcision to claim the covenant life, to be claimed as a Jewish child. Now you have 40 days later that Mary and Joseph take Jesus to the temple for the dedication. And they are being faithful followers of their Judeo faith. They are doing what their law requires of them. To give their firstborn son to be dedicated to God. And to bring a sacrificial gift. If we look back in Leviticus, you can read about all of the, the ways in which one follows that requirement. If you can't provide a lamb, there is the option of turtle doves or pigeons and reflecting the social economic status of Mary and Joseph they bring the birds as their gift but the point for that part of the text is to realize and to reflect upon how Mary and Joseph the parents of Jesus Keep their faith. Follow their traditions. Do as the law requires so that they are honoring God and bringing Jesus up in the root and in the foundation and in all the blessings that the faith has to offer. The Gospel of Luke, and a reason that I particularly like it, is how it gives voice to the voiceless, how it gives emphasis on God's bent toward the most vulnerable in society, the, the people who are on the edges and the margins or do not feel welcome or a part. And so, it's, it's very Luke that as Jesus is brought into the temple, we're now going to hear two voices that affirm who Jesus is, and one is a male and one is a female. These voices are also named for us. And so we first hear from Simeon. And Simeon is, well, Simeon is the individual that is identified and is given voice to affirm who Jesus is and really foreshadows this life that Jesus is going to live. But very prominent to the person of Simeon is the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so if you revisit the text, you see that Simeon is led by the Holy Spirit. Simeon is given knowledge by the Holy Spirit. And you can even read it, at least in the English translation, that Simeon is there at the temple at that very moment because the Holy Spirit has brought him there. So Simeon is a person whose life is so grounded and so connected to God as to be fully led by the Holy Spirit. He's there. And when the parents walk into the temple and they, they have this 40-day-old child that they bring up to Simeon, when he holds 
the child. He speaks that the Spirit told him he would not die until he saw the Messiah. And looking upon that child, Jesus, he sees the Messiah. Someone has commented in the past that uh, in the Christmas narrative, everybody's breaking out into song. What Simeon says to the parents about this child, Jesus, is often called the song of Simeon. Now your servant can depart in peace, for I have indeed seen the Messiah. But he goes on to express that this Messiah, this child, Jesus, is going to grow and have a message that brings the Gentiles into the circle of God's kingdom, that brings the people of Israel. This is an inclusive message at the very beginning of Jesus' life. The Gospel writer Luke will repeatedly lift up how Jesus reaches out most vulnerable, and how Jesus would bring all of humanity together in love and care of one another. But he also gives words to the mother Mary that, that are more sobering. It's a great joy to hear about salvation coming to the Gentiles and to the Israelites and to all people, but then to hear the words spoken to Mary that he will cause the rise and the fall of men. And Mary, it will even pierce your side. If we know the full story of Jesus' life, we can make that connection between the incarnation, the birth of Jesus, God with us, and the child who grows to be the one whose ministry sets the example for how we are to live and how we are to understand life together. But a ministry that takes him to a betrayal and to a trial and to a a suffering, agonizing, painful death on a cross before the resurrection. And in that passion narrative, we read how Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there at the foot of the cross. A mother who outlives a child and physically sees his suffering. A sword will pierce your side as well. Well, the other voice is that of Anna. I was um, in a Sunday school class, virtual Zoom Sunday school class last week, talking about the Magnificat, uh, Mary's song, and the radical nature of that song. You may have heard this before, but if you haven't, it is fascinating to note that in the course of history, governments have banned the Magnificat. During the British rule of India, they outlawed, the British outlawed, the singing or the speaking of the Magnificat in worship. In the 80s in Guatemala, the government banned the Magnificat because they feared the message it gave to the poor, that they would be lifted up and the mighty brought down. And during the dirty war in Argentina, 
The mothers of the missing children all gathered in the central plaza of Buenos Aires and they postered, they plastered all over the place posters of the Magnificat and the government bandit. It's a radical message to the world. Mary sang that. Well, in the Sunday school class, I, I asked the question about, so now with that thought, hear the Magnificat again, and then let's ask ourselves, what is so radical to our ears today? And one of the people said, it's a woman speaking. It's still radical today. So, Anna, a female voice in this text. And Anna, she is an older woman who's been at the temple constantly, praying unceasingly, looking for the redemption of the world. According to the text, she sheltered in place and chose the temple. Again, reflecting for us someone who is keeping the faith and she too recognizes in this child, baby Jesus, the one who has come to save, to redeem, to reconcile. I really appreciated in that opening prayer the, the idea of daring to hope. She embodies someone who faithfully, daily, over and over and over again, for 84 plus years, hoping, longing, looking for, believing. And she is given the gift of her hope coming to pass. She holds Jesus and sees the redemption of the world. The other quality of Anna that I believe Luke is highlighting is that she shares this news. Well, I want to I want to sort of bring up two things for us to consider from all those movements in the text. The first is that uh, there's, there's a conversation that flows through theology all across the generations. And it gets played out in our own faith discussions and trying to figure out what we believe as well. And that is the, the balance or the weight we give to God's sovereignty and our human agency or our actions. And I recently was reading an article by Walter Brueggemann, a professor emeritus at uh, Columbia Theological Seminary who was um, he was discussing a theological uh, lens of our political realities in the United States and I really don't want to go into politics here but he was using this particular conversation of human agency or God's sovereignty and he used the illustration of whether someone chooses or chooses not to wear a mask. But 
that is a theological strain across all of faith. And in this particular text, you have that God's sovereignty peace with Simeon. He is given advanced knowledge by the Holy Spirit. He's led by the Holy Spirit. He is where he needs to be at the moment he needs to be in order to see the Messiah because the Holy Spirit has placed him there. And so you get a powerful sense of God's sovereignty and God leading Simeon. And then you have the prophet Anna who's representing for us the human agency or action part of the equation. She has by her own will and determination and faith and hope and conviction chosen to be in the temple, chosen to pray daily, chosen to give her entire life and being every piece of her to her relationship with God and her faith. It is an act of her will. And she too is in the place she needed to be at the time she needed to be there in order to see the redemption of the world. So the text presents for us the balance. And Mary and Joseph bring it all together. For Mary is a child, as we heard in the Christmas narrative of the past week, and gives birth to the very Son of God. And in Luke's telling of the narrative, the Holy Spirit or an angel has been involved in conversation with Zechariah, with Elizabeth, with Mary, with the shepherds. All the threads of God's hand and action involve and he grows in wisdom and stature. Well, the last thing is I also hear in the Christmas narrative a great reminder that our individual lives or even our life as Glendale or our life as Christians in the body of Christ around the world. These life narratives are part of a much bigger narrative. What God is doing with all of God's creation what God is doing to bring about the future that God has already prepared for all of us. And so, what has come to pass came to pass because of the work of the Holy Spirit and through the faithfulness of individuals. We who are of the Wesleyan tradition, United Methodists talk about spiritual disciplines and means of grace. And so may it come to pass as we live into the year 2021 that we open our lives to the movement of the Holy Spirit, that we choose the spiritual disciplines of prayer, of worship, of sacrament, of scriptural reading, the means of grace of sharing our resources, reaching out to care for others and welcome others and include others so that they too feel loved. We speak of covenant and it's a covenant life. There is 
liturgy and the marriage covenant that brings to the benediction, may you bear witness to those who have felt unloved. May you bear witness to love. We live our lives in a narrative that we share, but we live our lives in an even bigger narrative of what God is doing and what God wants to do through us to bring about the full kingdom and peace throughout the world. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for this wonderful world you have created and for every evidence of your spirit moving about. For every moment we feel your spirit filling us, guiding us. We also, Lord, would celebrate the will you have given us as a free gift. And may we choose to live our lives faithfully according to the example of Christ Jesus. That redemption and salvation that you offer to all in Christ might flow through us and be shared by us so that all will come to know this narrative, your love for us all, and to Christ be all the glory. Amen. We invite you to sing with us at home, Star Child. Star child, earth child, go between of God. Love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone. left to go her child used child no one wants to know this year this year let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone everyone alive grown child old child memory full Sad child, lost child, story told in tears. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Spared child, spoiled child, having wanting more. Wise child, faith child, knowing joys in store. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. Hope for peace child, God's stupendous sign down to child, star of stars that shine. This year, this year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. A few announcements this morning. 
this is your first time worshiping alongside us, or if you've recently started worshiping alongside us um, online, uh, we hope that you will click on that link to our uh, online connection card uh, so we know that you're worshiping alongside us and we can connect with you. Um, I like to joke here uh, when we're here in the sanctuary like normal. Um, that we won't harass you if you uh, let us know that you're joining us. So uh, that uh, extends to all those online who are worshiping alongside us. Um, I want to thank uh, Dr. Peter Povey and Alessandra Volpe for being with us this morning on violin and piano. Um, it is an amazing gift to have uh, both of you with us uh, this morning. Um, the flowers on the altar this morning are given to the glory of God uh, in honor of Carol Pittman's birthday and just in uh, gratitude for all that she does uh, here among us at Glendale. Uh, she leads our care and nurture uh, ministry and does a lot of work behind the scenes uh, that you may not see, um, but um, we thought that flowers were appropriate since she has gifted so many of you uh, watching uh, this spring and summer with uh, her garden's flowers. So uh, we just continue to give thanks for you uh, being here among us, Carol. A few birthdays to celebrate. Michael Grout has a birthday today, so happy birthday, Michael. Uh, Jamie Adair has a birthday tomorrow, and Mae Kelton has a birthday on Friday. Uh, Josh and Lori Williford are celebrating their anniversary tomorrow. So we celebrate alongside each one of you uh, this week. If I didn't name your uh, birthday or anniversary uh, that's coming up this week, please comment that in the comments and we'll be sure to celebrate alongside you. If you weren't in worship with us last Sunday, um, our Glendale family continues to grow. We welcomed Joshua Upchurch into our Glendale family. So if you're feeling the nudge, if you've been around for, for not too long or for a while and uh, would love to uh, officially join our Glendale family, um, it's your uh, commitment to this uh, community of faith by your prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, and our, um, our love and uh, responsibility back to you to, to walk alongside you through your faith journey um, and in the times of joy and in the times of sorrow along your life path. So um, if you would like to uh, learn more about what being a member means, uh, Pastor Steph would love to talk with you. Um, our offering uh, this morning, there's many ways to give uh, that help support the ministries here at Glendale. Um, last week, I, I read uh, a note from um, the Vanderbilt Office of LGBTQI Life um, as they uh, utilized uh, this sanctuary space for the Transgender Day of Remembrance service uh, here for the greater Nashville area. So the building, although we might not sit in the pews here on Sundays, uh, the building still provides ministry space um, in a safe way during the pandemic, and uh, life does go on here. So uh, we appreciate all the support that you give us. Um, our new... Um, upper room edition for January, February is out. So I saw that Pastor Steph had put some out on the, um, in a basket out by the rocking chair. So if you want to pick one up this week, um, it starts for January and February. Um, if you don't live in Nashville, uh, we'll mail you one. Or if you live nearby, we uh, can drop you off one if that would be helpful. So uh, be sure to get your upper room daily devotional guide for the next couple months. Obviously, you noticed that Pastor Steph was not uh, here, but she has been texting me, um, so I know that she is uh, worshiping alongside us uh, in Minnesota, um, so we want to thank uh, Pastor Peter for being here this morning. Yes. Uh, if you, if you uh, have been worshiping alongside us for uh, any length of time, you know that Pastor Steph is pretty much always here. Um, so we are thankful that she gets a two-week uh, reprieve um, and uh, that our own Alan Whitley will be preaching next Sunday. So um, I hope that you will um, uh, make some uh, purposeful intentionality on uh, worshiping alongside us um, in 2021. So I think that's all. Peter. word next week and I know that you'll want to be a part of that and join in our worship time. We uh, we have had amazing music so thank you and, and I can say that that is a uh, consistent offering of Glendale. If you come every week this, this is a, a worshiping community that is blessed with wonderful music um, someone 
Someone said many years ago that every generation needs to add its own stanza to the song of Christmas. And Star Child, which we just sang, is a relatively new one, and it was written in 1994. But it adds to the song of Christmas that anticipatory, daring to hope message that uh, in the coming days or in the coming year, the, the gift of Christmas, the message of Christmas, the narrative of where God is wanting to lead us will come to pass. Let us now go in peace and commit ourselves to bringing about that message. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, the redemption of the world. Amen. Thank you.